All right. All right. So today, I'm ta- we're tackling the big question of can we trust the Bible? So we're going to go through it, and we're going to touch on all of these different topics, and we're going to go through, and we're just going to prove, essentially see what kind of facts we have, trusting the Bible, trusting the gospel, and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to start with the gospel timetable, because one of the big problems that skeptics have is like, oh, you know, the Bible wasn't uh, put together until like years and years and years later, which is kind of not exactly the truth. I mean, yes, it was put together at the Council of Cathar 500 years later officially, but the, bo- the books themselves were actually put together way beforehand. So I'm going to make a little timeline right here. This is Jesus' birth. This is Jesus' death at 30 A.D. So Jesus died. Huh? Yep. Rough, it was a rough estimation. I know it's 30. Jesus died at 33 A.D., right? So we're going through, and what we can learn from the book of Acts, which is... Wait a minute. Oh, man, just has to go outside. All right, so basically it's the writing of Luke about Peter going on, and it's talking, and we can conclude from that writing that because it was stopped almost abruptly at the end whenever he was killed, that we can conclude that it was written during his lifetime. So if that book was written during his lifetime, and it has references to the book of Mark, that would have been said that the book of Mark would have had to be roughly created a couple years earlier, right? So this is the book of Acts created right here. And we know that um, Paul was killed at roughly, what was it, 62 AD. That's 62 AD. Wait, it was way over here at like about 500 AD. That's the Council of Cathar where the Bible was supposedly, you know, all put together to make the Bible. Now, this is the books of Acts written 62 AD is when it was finished because that's whenever Paul died. However, we can conclude from that because it has references to, to uh, Matthew that, uh, was it Mark? Which one? Yeah, Mark. Because it has references to Mark, that was roughly a couple years beforehand that Mark was created. So let's give them a couple years there and say that it was actually made from... Uh, late 50s to early 60s AD. So basically, now we have definitive proof that proves that one of the big books of the gospel, where it's written down the accounts of everything, was created within roughly a 30-year gap of the actual events happening, which is the equivalent way back then to like a massive news flash. Because there was also... Uh, around that time, whenever the um, we have Al- uh, Alexander the Great is going through like years and years and years later, and um, his story, yeah. Finish what you're saying right now. Okay. Well, we later have Alexander the Great going through, and his story is actually preserved, but nothing is written down about him until. So this is going to be Alex Alexander the Great. His story, nothing goes on until four hundred years later whenever any of it's actually written down. So this is literally, the, and we still take Alexander the Great's story to actually be truth, although there is some folklore that was developed around it later, much, much later after his story was actually told. This is when his original story was told. So the proof is that the timetable is literally the, essentially a newsflash of back then, that like people were like, oh my gosh, this dude rose from the dead. Like, let's write it down. Let's get it out there as soon as quickly, as soon as possible, which is what they did. And note that this is actually still within the, like, 30 years, that's still within the lifetime of so many people that would have seen it. So, say I'm going through, and, um, you know, these guys, they would memorize the books. They would have, all have it in their head, as was customary, just like um, the rabbis at the time, they would memorize the entire Old Testament. And they would take that as, like, a really big deal that they were doing, like, oh, you know, they knew that, like, it's a really respectable thing to do. So they would have these books memorized, and they would be going around preaching, doing all that kind of stuff, still within the lifetime of people that would have seen it. So not only would, would skeptics have the ability to come through and be like, no, you know, that wasn't true, you know, whatever. Like, they would be open to criticism from, from skeptics, but also correction from other people that were actually there since they were all still alive within this time, between this 30 years whenever it actually happened and it was first written down. Not to mention the book of Matthew going on sooner. So, like, you know... Just, just saying. So basically, that's 
how we can trust the timetable of the gospel. So now I'm going to erase this and move on to our next point. Did you have a question? No, you answered it. Oh, okay. Look at me. I feel like a teacher, right? Yes, you this whole are. Mr. Green, can I go to the restroom? No, not until I'm done. All right. So, the gospel preservation, no, I don't care. The gospel preservation was actually preserved. A lot of people are like, well, they didn't write any, they didn't really have a whole lot of writing back then. Like I said earlier, they actually preserved it um, by memorization, which is an extremely, extremely common thing that I said earlier that they would go through and everybody, because they didn't have um, kind of like our attention span that we have today. They didn't have technology. They had obviously they didn't have technology or anything like that. So their attention spans were a lot greater, and thus their mental capacity was. I mean, it was a lot more common for people to have like long excerpts of things memorized because that's how they preserved knowledge back then. Before they had, you know, things to write, write it down. Before they would like compile books and things like that. Next, we have a big one, just gospel contradictions. So. Um, if I tell you a joke, like I tell you a really funny joke, and you think it's funny, and you go and you go to work, or you go to one of your friends, and um, you go out and you tell the joke, you may tell the joke just a little bit differently than I do, but with the same punchline, which is the idea that we're going with here in the contradictions, is in any given story, there's roughly a 10 to 40% of deviation between the stories told from one person to the next. Like if you ever played the game Telephone, it changes, but what the problem is, with the game of telephone, and that's why a lot of people like to um, use this as like, oh, this is why the Bible can't be true, because just look what happens. If it's told from one person to another to another, and all of a sudden it's completely wrong. It's a whole completely different thing than what we started off with. But that is not exactly how it happened. If I were to tell you something, and I say, you know, like, I don't know, Patches is cute, then it goes around and it turns into something totally different, but you're not taking the attention. If I told you, I met this guy, his name is Jesus, and he was resurrected from the dead, and he did all this crazy stuff, you're sitting there, and because you're taking in this information, and not you're memorizing it so that you can kind of have almost your own Bible, but it would have to be up here at the time. So you're going through, and you're memorizing, you're carefully memorizing, like, oh, you know, okay, so this is what happened, this, 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 and you're double checking with me. Then you go, if you tell somebody else, and they're like, all right, this, they're memorizing, this is just, and they would come back to me, they're like, hey, is this correct? You know, making sure, which you don't get the opportunity to do in the game of telephone, where it's just, I say it one time, you say it one time, one time, one time, one time, and if you hear it wrong, anything like that, it's totally different. So the game of telephone is a horrible, it, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't stand up in the eyes of scrutiny. But um, anyway, yeah, so the contradictions in the Bible are, like I said, uh, 10 to 40 percent of any bless you. Bless bless you. Bless you. Yeah. of any kind of story is subject to um, kind of differences just like the way that the first that the first four books of the Bible Matthew Mark Luke and John are told differently and that's why people are like oh you know if they're all told you know like in one version it says uh, like on the sign where Jesus was crucified it's like here lies Jesus king of the Jews the next, the next person says, oh, this is Jesus of Nazareth, king of the Jews. The next says, oh, it said uh, king of the Jews, all that kind of stuff, which is a contradiction. However, the general idea that they're trying to preserve, like, hey, th they made a sign, it said this, it was indicating about Jesus. That's the general idea. And, like, if you think about it, it would actually be more sort of concerning if all the, go the books of the gospel were all exactly the same. Because they're written by four different people at four different times independently. So if I told a story and you told a story the exact same way, and you told the story the exact same way, that would be a little creepy. It would almost be like we kind of work together and like, all right, this is how the story goes. This is how, this is how we're gonna tell the story. You know, like if you're going to the cops and the cops go and they're like, hey, what happened? You tell the exact same story as all your other buddies because you guys work, you rehearsed the story, all that kind of stuff. It's a little sketchy. Writing a paper and your friend just copies your paper and you both put it in and, what, and the teacher's like, hey, I like how you I've you done that. Like, like school paper, he's like the cops. Oh my god, you're right. Like, we literally wrote the same essay. We turned it in. I failed and she got an A. I was like, what? All right. So basically, regardless of this 10 to 40 percent, the subject has changed. The base ideas are all there, and they're all similar, and they shouldn't exactly be the same because they're written by independent people. So now we've gone through the gospel timetable, the gospel preservation, and the gospel contradictions. Now we're going through and 
let me, where's this? And go through and we're going to discuss whether or not uh, Jesus could be kind of considered the Son of God, which is nothing that I can actually prove whether or not, because as we all know, Christianity is kind of based off, you know, here are the facts, here's what we know, it's your turn to make the, de- the decision, it's your turn to kind of make the belief. So, um, as we know, you know, uh, Jesus was asked multiple times, you know, whether or not he was God or whatever, and um, there's one time when Peter came to him and he was like, hey, you know, who are you? And he was like, who do you think I am? And he's like, are you like the son of God? And he's like, you said it, not me, you know, like, I don't know, it was kind of creepy, but like, you know, <laughs> so it was kind of weird, but basically Jesus never outright came and said, you know, hey, I'm God. He's just like, you know, you know me, you know the Lord, you know, I mean, we're kind of one and the same. I'm one with him. But the one thing that we can do is go through and um, here are a bunch of the um, sort of the guidelines. Like if you're going to be the savior, if you're going to be the king of the Jews and everything, you have to meet these criteria. You have to be born of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Judah, and in the lineage of David. He said he would uh, be born of Bethlehem, that he'd come while the temple was still in standing, that he would be born of virgin, that he, that he would be born of a virgin, that he would open his eyes to the blind, un, unstop the ears of the deaf, and cause the lame to walk, that he would be rejected by his own people. The scriptures foretold the precise time in history when he would die, how he would die, uh, and that he would rise again from the dead. So the odds of anyone at that time meeting any eight of those, not like, oh, you know, rise from the dead, you know, like meeting any of the eight practical um, ones are one in 100 quadrillion that anyone would have randomly been born just of meeting all these, oh, he was son of David, he was born of a virgin, he was doing all this stuff. One in 100 quadrillion, which is, you know, I don't have to tell right y'all, now. that's, huh? Right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be fifteen zeros. One and one. Twelve, thirteen. Yeah, you could have just written. Those are some good chances. They said write it out, so you could just. Those are some pretty bad chances. You have a better chance of getting. Wait. Those like dot like desk like periods. It's like da 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 da. Wait. You have a better chance of getting struck by lightning. Like four times, I think it was, or something yeah. like that. No, that was 18 times. Because hmm? you have like a one in one trillion chance of being struck by lightning. You have a better chance of getting struck by lightning a lot of times than uh, actually doing this. So now, the, so those are some of the facts that the odds that this would happen completely randomly. Now, of the time when Jesus is going around, he's performing miracles, he's making the blind see, the lame walk, the deaf hear, all that kind of stuff. Um, none, no, at no point in that time did any skeptic or anyone ever accuse him of not being able to do those things. The only thing they were able to accuse of is being like a heretic or uh, some kind of like a sorcerer, or some kind of a witch, something like that. But they all never in any recorded history is it recorded saying, oh, you know, no, Jesus did not, you know, go and make that deaf guy here. You know, he's just referred to as where the source of his power kind of came from. Um, then the other thing that I wanted to talk about, um, is, um, whether or not the disciples would have lied. So, Jesus met all of the criteria to be the Son of God, which the odds are 1 in 1, 18 zeros, 1 in 100 quads. Yeah, they were not in his favor at all. And, um, he was, like, everyone was in agreement at the time. He's going around and he's making all these miracles happen. Everybody could agree to that because there were so many hundreds of thousands of witnesses that would come and be witness to his miracles. So he's doing some pretty crazy things. And um, another thing that a lot of people kind of, you know, like, oh, would the disciples kind of have made up that, you know, they see, they read the Old Testament, they say, hey, here's all these, um, you know, things that Jesus would have to be. And they just kind of made up that this guy existed. And they just kind of made up this guy like, oh, here's the dude. He came and he fulfilled all of them. Like, oh. What a coincidence. But um, at the time, that is very, 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 very not likely that they would have done that because eventually they were all kind of paid the price and most of them killed for it. So it's not like, oh, they would just go out and challenge the church and do all these kind of things because they all ended up really suffering for it. So there's not a whole lot of motivation on their part to go out and 
do all that kind of stuff because I'm 